All right, welcome to the video. Hope everyone is doing well. This is going to be some footage from a high volume shoulder, bicep, tricep, and trap workout. Um, I do train these muscle groups twice per week, along with everything else. There were a few exercises that I didn't record the um, sets and reps. So real quick, I'm just gonna explain about that. Um, the other exercises, you will see the info down on the screen, but some of these exercises, like this one that you see me doing right now, hammer curl, um, typically the way I set it up is usually about three sets, three to four sets in the eight to 15 rep range. Um, once in a while, I may do more typical straight sets. So think of like three sets of 10, four sets of 10, whatever. But not usually. A lot of the times, I prefer a mix of higher reps with less weight, more strict form, and working up to heavier weight. Um, I won't always go super heavy on isolation exercises, but sometimes I will include one or two heavier sets in the one or six rep max range. For this particular workout though, I believe I kept it in the eight to 15 rep range. And I did about three to four sets um, per arm exercise. Don't necessarily have a specific order in which I do the exercises. A lot of the times I go based on feel. Um, you know, so I might start with a shoulder exercise, then maybe do a bicep, maybe a tricep, etc. Kind of just do what I feel like doing. Although I will say, um, there's certain exercises that I will prioritize, like um, shoulder press, for instance. Um, I'll do that earlier on before I really tire my arms out because obviously I don't want that to affect my performance. But for the most part, I pretty much do the same exercises you know, each workout. I mean, once in a while I might switch things up, but because things pretty much stay the same, I kind of, you know, have an idea as to what I'm going to do and then just go based off how I'm feel feeling. Sometimes I'll do supersets, sometimes even tricets. Um, but, you know, kind of adjust my training intensity and approach accordingly, depending how I'm feeling. And I think that is such an important concept. Um, you know, listening to your body, knowing when it might be time to push harder and when you might need to give yourself a little bit more of a break. Case in point, I just finished up a recovery period in the form of a deload. This was not planned. After, my, um, after I finished up day six of my split and I took you know, my rest day, I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe, maybe it was time to take a recovery period. And I'm glad I did. So I ended up doing that for a whole week's worth of workouts. So that would be six days on, one day off. Um, today is day three. Then I'm back at full in intensity and, you know, normal performance. So how I set up the deload was basically just lower the weight, um, you know, keeping the reps 10 or above um, and, you know, slightly reducing the volume. So just kind of backing off altogether and, you know, not lifting super, super light, but just weight that I can comfortably get for 10 to 15 reps, depending on the exercise, and not taking it to failure. I'm pretty sure I've talked about recovery periods in past videos, but essentially I do one of two things. Either take some time off entirely, so anywhere from two to four days to a week, or a deload which is basically reduce the overall workload. So that could come in the form of lower intensity, lower volume, lower weight, or a combination of you know, multiple things. The thing about taking a deload versus time off altogether is for some people, being in the gym is so much more than just about building muscle or losing weight. You know, it can have a real positive impact on mental health, your daily routine, 
you know, just basically everything that you do. Fitness, you know, can have such a positive impact on so many areas that taking that time off might be hard for someone. So that's where a deload, you know, can come in handy because it allows you to still be in the gym but still give your body recovery time. Now, you can pre-plan recovery periods in your routine. So every certain amount of weeks, you take one. That can help keep you ahead of the game, not getting to a point that you're so over-fatigued that it might take a little bit longer for your body to recover. Or you can just take them when you feel you need to. Personally, that's what I tend to do, is just take it when I feel I need to. Um, But, you know, pre-planning it into your routine can be beneficial, you know, as I said. So um, it really comes down to personal preference, you know, how you want to work it and what works best for you. So before we wrap the video up, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel and who has been watching the videos. We're just about to hit 1,000 subscribers, so I appreciate you all and I value your feedback. Want to make sure that I'm creating content that is valuable and that you enjoy watching. So leave a comment if you have any video ideas or questions, topics you'd like me to cover, and I'll see you all in the next one.